Good morning from Mount Pisgah. Praying all is well. Uh, this morning we're going to be in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 21 through 25. The title of this message is, You Can't Hide from the Light. So, if you will, turn with me there and we'll read Mark 4, 21 through 25. Scripture says, And He said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should be come abroad. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath to him shall be given. And he that hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he hath. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We pray that you would take this word and you would embed it into our hearts and allow us to call upon it as we go about our daily activities. Father God, I do ask today that you be with those who are sick and shut in. We've had so many people in our flock that is sick that with serious illnesses, and I pray you would just touch them in a special way. I pray for the men and women who serve this nation in the military. I pray for all of our police officers all of our firefighters, and all of our ambulance personnel. And Lord, I do pray that uh, you would be with our little church and help us to grow as you see fit. I pray that you will open ears today, that you will let people hear what you have to say, not what I have to say. And Lord, that it would just pierce their heart and they would cry out to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <clears throat> there was a young boy about nine years old. And he went on a trip to Europe with his parents one summer. Part of their tour included visits to some of the great cathedrals of Europe. As he visited cathedral after cathedral, he saw the massive stained glass portraits of the disciples and the other saints. He was very impressed as he stood in these empty hallways looking through the beautiful stained glass windows. Upon his return to the United States and to his church, he was asked by a Sunday school teacher about the great churches of Europe and what he liked the most. He thought for a moment, he said, I loved seeing the saints of God pictured in the stained glass windows. His teacher asked, and what is a saint? The boy's mind drifted back to those massive, beautiful, stained glass windows. And he said, a saint is a person that the light shines through. Now, my friends, today that is a very good definition of what a saint of God is supposed to be. We have no light of our own, but we, like the moon, we are to reflect the light of Jesus to a lost and dying world. You see, in our text today, the Lord gives us some insight into light and the place that it occupies in the spiritual matters. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. His light penetrates even to the darkest places in this world and even into the blackest of hearts. So if you will, allow me to share a few of the facts of light with you today as I preach on the subject, you can't hide from the light. In verse 21 of our text, it reads, And he said, said unto to hint them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? You see here, Jesus teaches His disciples using a common image of a candle to teach a profound spiritual lesson. In His day, it would have been an oil lamp. Every house had at least one. 
this, this lamp was used to provide light in houses that were naturally dark. Houses in that day had notched cuts in the, into the wall so that the lamp could be placed there. And when the lamp was lit, it was not lit to be hidden under a basket or under a bed. The lamp was lit to be placed in a high location so that everyone in the house could receive light. This parable is designed to illustrate the purpose of spiritual light. When Jesus shared the Word of God, He was giving light to the world. Jesus' light was given to speak to people trapped in spiritual darkness to show them that there was a way for them to be saved. In John 9, 5, Jesus said, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when Jesus left, He left us with the light. Our Lord's light burned brightly, teaching man about the love of God. In John three sixteen, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus' light was designed for the sole purpose of revealing the Heavenly Father to a fallen man. Jesus' light increased in its intensity until it shone with the glory of heaven as He gave His life for sinners on an old rugged cross. After that, it burst forth in radiant beams when He arose from the dead. Our Lord's light was not designed to be hidden away. He came to this world not to hide the truth from man, but to reveal the truth to those who were lurking in darkness. When He saved us from our sins, the Lord placed this light within us. He does not want us to hide the light in any way. He wants us to allow His light to shine through our lives so that others might see the way to God. Today, far, far too many Christians are guilty of hiding the light that Jesus left them with. Light is a tremendous gift. Can you remember when the darkness of your sinful past was shattered by the light of the gospel? Can you remember when the Lord placed His light and His life within you? If you can, then you know the value of that light. It must not be hid away, but it must be shared with a lost and dying world. In verse 22 of our text, it says, For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. Light has power. Jesus reminds us that the light holds the power to make hidden things plain. The light that Jesus brought into this world only reveals the hidden things that God wanted man to see. It also reveals the hidden things that are within mankind. That is why so many people who have heard the Gospel have rejected it. You see, the gospel is a message of salvation, but it is also a message of condemnation, of confrontation. It is a message that reveals the darkness of a human's heart. People are like the insects and other creatures of the night. When they see the light, they flee when it shines upon them. Why? Jesus said it is because their deeds are evil. When the light of the gospel shines in a person's heart, it reveals all the darkness contained in that heart. This is a painful experience for the lost sinner. The first step in coming to Jesus to be saved is having your sins exposed in the light and admitting that you are a sinner. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
you must also understand that there is a coming a day when all the hidden things in the darkness will be revealed. Christians will see all of their secrets exposed at the judgment seat of Christ. Lost people will see their secrets revealed at the great white throne judgment. The Bible teaches that not one single person has ever gotten away with their sin. You and I cannot hide sins from God. He knows them already. He just wants you to repent of them and ask for His forgiveness. And that's what a lot of people fail to do. In Numbers 32.23, it says, Be sure your sin will find you out. Then in Proverbs it says, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsake them shall have mercy. Our sins will be exposed. Only when we get honest about our sins can we experience God's forgiveness. In 1 John 1, 1.9 it says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, when you try to hide your sins, it's like having cancer. Those sins will destroy you just like cancer will if it goes untreated. Jesus says in verse 23, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. So my friends, are you listening today? The Lord is trying to speak to someone in this place today. Is it you? Is He shining His light on you? In verse 24, it says, For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, for him shall be taken, even that which he hath. This verse is rich and powerful in truth. We are cautioned to listen to the right voices. We are counseled to pass the truth on to others. And we are comforted by the precious promises of Jesus Christ. So let's, let, let us unpack these three statements for just a moment. Jesus cautions us to listen to the right voice. There are many, many voices competing for our attention in these days. And we must be careful that we only hear the Lord's voice as He calls you to Himself. The right voice will always speak words that line up with the Bible and point the way to Jesus Christ. When you hear that voice, you must be sure that you heed what it tells you to do. When it calls you to come to Jesus to be saved, you need to come. When it calls you to a life of deeper commitment, you need to obey it. When it calls you to life of service, you need to surrender. And you need to be aware of how you, how you hear the voice. You need to be ever listening for the voice of the Lord to speak to your heart in that still, small voice. We've already mentioned this, but it's worth mentioning again. The Lord has called us to share the truth that we have received. Of all the things that you can do with your life, there's nothing greater than taking time to share your faith. Taking time to share the things that God has shown you with other folks. We've been given a great privilege. The privilege of being called to proclaim the gospel to the world. We are comforted by the Lord's promise. The idea here is that those who listen to what the Lord is telling them and obeys Him by giving their faith away will see Him reveal even more truth to them. You will become aware of things that you ever, never even knew existed. If you truly want to know the deep things of God, then take the time to share the things you already know. Give away what God has given you. 
Did you learn something about the Lord in your private time today? If you did, give it away. Did you gather a nugget in Sunday school? If you did, give it away. Did you get something from the sermon you heard recently? If you did, give it away. Did God open your eyes to a deep truth in His Word? If so, give it away. Share it. The Gospel is the only commodity that becomes more valuable as you give it away. The more you share the truth with others, the more the Lord will share the truth with you. And as we share our faith, we are making an investment in others and in our own spiritual growth. We are called to be rivers of living water. We are supposed to let the truth flow out of us and into others. Far too many Christians act like they are pawns. The truth flows in, but nothing ever flows back out. And as a result, their life becomes stagnant. God doesn't just save the sinner and forgive his sins. He adopts that individual into his very own family. He gives that individual peace, joy, hope, and a blessing. He provides absolute assurance and eternal security. You see, we have a Savior who gives not of His riches, but according to His riches. God reaches into His vast storehouses in heaven, and He keeps on giving us more and more and more. He gives us more love, more mercy, more forgiveness, more grace, more hope, and many more blessings. In verse 25 it says, For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Now this verse is telling us the person who hears the truth and passes it on will see his ability to receive truth expanded. He grows in the things of God in the ways that he could never imagine. That is the promise to the person who gives away the light. On the other hand, the person who rejects the truth will see his ability to recognize truth diminished. Not only will this kind of individual receive less truth, they will eventually lose their grasp of the truth they once had. Rejecting spiritual truth will develop into a tragedy in the life of every person who rejects the light. Their rejection of the truth will condemn them to hell. John 5.40 says, And ye will not come to me that you might have life. The little candle holds tremendous power. It has the ability to dispel the darkness. The candle gives its light at great cost to itself. As the candle gives away its precious light, its very life is consumed. And this is the perfect illustration of what Jesus did for us. Jesus paid a high price to bring His light into this lost world. He died on the cross so that you might have life and that you might have the light. We must let our light shine so that the world lost in darkness might see the way to come to God. We must never be guilty of hoarding the light, hiding the light, or hindering the light. We must let our light shine for the glory of God. Folks, you can't hide from the light. The truth of God's Word will confront you someday. It may have already done so today. It may be that the Lord has spoken to your heart. He has revealed your sins and pointed out the truth of the Gospel. If that's the case, you need to come to Him and be saved. I beg you, do not reject 
the truth. Please do not continue to travel down the road towards hell. Whatever you need today, I ask that you pray and ask God. If you need salvation, repent of your sins and ask God to forgive you. Whatever you need, just ask the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. I pray that you would use it for your honor and for your glory. And that if anyone within the sound of my voice were saved today, I pray that they would follow up with finding a gospel preaching church, Bible preaching church, that they would follow Jesus in scriptural baptism, that they would find a quiet place to read and study God's word that they would find a place to, to pray and talk to God daily, and that they would find a spirit-filled church and get involved with it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.